Welcome to 21st Sports. Football is back and so are we. And we're talking the Minnesota Vikings at the Tennessee Titans. And their season opener played September 11th, 2016. These two teams played their first game of the NFL 2016 season. Of course, the home opener was Thursday. But here on Sunday, these two teams starting off their 2016 campaigns. And what a game it was for Minnesota going on the road, picking up a victory, a hard-fought victory on the road. Anytime you win on the road, it always is a good thing for sure. Anytime you win, period. But picking up those road wins are always very important. Of course, there was a question who would be under center for the Vikings. They went with Sean Hill, not Sam Bradford, so we wouldn't see the former teammates going at it, although they are both on offense. But... Marcus Murray there for the Titans, the former Eagle, and of course Sam Bradford, newly acquired by Minnesota, but he did not play in this game. Of course, they are both from that failed Chip Kelly experiment there in Philadelphia, but here in Tennessee, the Vikings were in town for a game and not a lot of offense in this game and really not much going on on the ground, even though you had two of the more storied quarterbacks, of course, two former NFL rushing champions, but the between the two of them, they didn't even hit 100 yards. Between the two, between Peterson and Murray, they combined for only 73 yards. 42 for Murray, 31 for Peterson. But let's give the breakdown of how things went down in this game. It started off with a 28-yard field goal by Ryan Suckup in the first quarter. That was the only points in the first and so Tennessee led after one, three to nothing. Then in the second quarter, Marcus Mariota hit DeMarco Murray for a six-yard touchdown, and it was ten to nothing, Tennessee over Minnesota. So that was the score after one half of play. And then in the third quarter, the Vikings went on a tear, down ten to nothing. They scored twenty-five unanswered points. It all started off with a 50-yard field goal by Blair Walsh to get them on the board. And then Blair Walsh added another field goal, this time a 33-yarder, to bring them within four with the score 10 to 6. And then with about a minute and a half left still in the third quarter. Eric Kendricks comes up with a clutch interception and runs it back 77 yards for the pick six as he gets into the end zone. The extra point was no good, and so it was 12 to 10 as the Vikings were up by two after three as they had scored the only points in the third quarter. Of course, on that interception, Mariota was under heavy pressure. But now out of the fourth quarter, Blair Walsh would hit his third field goal of the game. This one a 45-yarder that made it 15-10. to 10. And then Daniel Hunter coming up with a clutch play, heads up, picking up the football on the ground and running it 24 yards for the defensive touchdown. The second defensive touchdown of the game for the Vikings. This time the extra point was good. And it was 22 to 10 after that fumble return for the touchdown. Of course, it was a botched handoff that led to that fumble as Mariota went to hand it off. And uh, a little, I don't know, I just ended up on the ground there. And Hunter picked it up, and the Vikings got the points. But Blair Walsh would kick his fourth field goal of the game. This one from 30 yards out with two and a half minutes still left to play to extend the lead to 15 with the score 25-10 to 10 Minnesota or Tennessee as they had scored 25 unanswered points in the second half. All of their points coming in the second half after having been shut out in the first half. And then just as time was running out with less than half a minute left, Mariota would hit Murray for the second touchdown connection. As you can see that that should be happening a lot this season. It happened twice in this game. But Mariota hits Murray, a four-yard touchdown pass. They went for two, but it did not you know, succeed. It was a failed conversion. And so it was 25-16. to 16, And that was all she wrote as the Vikings hold on to this one. Of course, coming up with some clutch defensive plays as they have one of the best defenses in football, one of the more underrated defenses in my opinion there in Minnesota as they have definitely... You know, that unit is young, but they've been together. They have a lot of cohesion, and they they played excellent last year. They've been playing pretty good for the last couple of years, but they really are gelling, and, and they are really hitting the high note right now, at least in this game they were. 
with those two defensive touchdown, one the interception, the 77 yarder, and then that 24 yard fumble return. But let's look at the offensive stats though for these two teams. Sean Hill, 18 for 33, 236 passing yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Peterson just night. Well, he had 19 carries for just 31 yards. That's abysmal. What a horrible performance by Adrian Peterson. Diggs, though, Stephon Diggs, seven catches for 103 yards, coming up big time. Kyle Rudolph also four catches for 65 yards. And then for Tennessee, Marcus Mariota, 25 for 41, 271 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. DeMarcus Murray, 13 carries for 42 yards. Not much uh, performance there. Of course, he didn't have a lot of carries, but then uh, the leading receiver was Sharp for Tennessee. Seven catches for 76 yards. Walker had three catches for 42 yards. Of course, uh, Murray did have five catches for 35 yards to give him a total of 77 yards in this game for DeMarcus Murray. Then we look at the uh, defense in this game. You had... A good performance there by Minnesota with Kendricks with that interception for the touchdown. Of course, Hunter had a sack as well as that fumble recovery for the touchdown. And Joseph had a forced fumble and a sack as well. We look at the first downs for these two teams. Just 15 for Minnesota, 19 for Tennessee. And on third down, the Tennessee Titans, 8 for 14, 57% on third down. They were converting on third down, but they were not able to capitalize and turn that into points on the board. The Vikings, 6 for 14 on third down, just 42%. And we look at total net yards, 316 for Tennessee, 301 for Minnesota on the ground. The Vikings netting 65 yards and the Titans netting 64 yards. Both teams had less than 3 yards average per rushing play just 2.3 yards per rushing play for Minnesota then we look at the passing yards net passing yards 252 for Tennessee Mariota sacked twice losing 19 yards 236 netted for Minnesota but Hill managed to get rid of the ball and he was not sacked at all and he did not throw any interceptions either so then we look at the penalties in this game not very many but there was uh, three penalties against the Vikings for 39 yards, just two penalties against the Titans for 10 yards. And we look at the red zone efficiency. The Vikings were 0 for 3, 0% in the red zone. I mean, you don't see that too often and then come away with a victory, except when you have your defense score two touchdowns, as they played phenomenally on that defensive side of the ball. They really carried the game for the Vikings and got them the W. We look at the red zone efficiency for the Titans. They were two for three, 66%. Of course, that second conversion came with less than half a minute left in the game when the game was already out of reach. So, you know, how much stock do you put in that? The time of possession, though, was pretty close. 30 minutes, 25 seconds for Tennessee to 29 minutes, 35 seconds for Minnesota. So this game was kind of ugly. But the Vikings coming away with the win and coming away with the win on the road, that's huge. They need to win games on the road if they're going to compete in a very tough NFC North with the Packers and the Lions. Because that's going to be a tough division right there. And Tennessee, they have have some bright spots. And if you take away those two uh, defensive touchdowns for the Vikings, well, then the Titans might come away with the win here. And they definitely have some things that they can build upon and... You know, we might see some more success. It's just week one, so it'll be interesting to see how things go moving forward for Tennessee. They definitely have a lot of potential on that team to be good. Of course, they've got a tough division as well, as they've got to compete with the Texans and also the Colts, not to mention the Jaguars are getting better every year as well. So it'll be interesting to see how things go moving forward. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. What plays and performances stuck out to you? Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and having a great weekend and enjoying all the sports.